Hi everyone, welcome back to this week's garden update. And this week, more so than ever, I'm just so looking forward to showing you around because I'm feeling great. Um, and that is not how I felt during the week. I have been just pretty sick um, with a migraine and just feeling not myself at all. But today I'm feeling back to normal. And even though I haven't done much in the garden, the garden has continued to um, grow and flower and there's still plenty of things to see. So let's get into it now. There are a lot of roses this week in the garden. I'll show you more later on, but for the moment, we'll start off with this plant here, which is near the raised garden bed area. Not as many flowers as there has been in previous years, but it's still looking pretty good considering it got attacked by aphids a few weeks ago. Thank goodness the ladybugs came in to the rescue, killed most of them off, and now we are enjoying these beautiful big blooms. So there are a few things that I want to chat to you about over here in the raised garden bed area. I still need to fix up this wooden archway which leads into the raised garden bed area. Down beside the rusty old post box where I store a lot of small garden tools I have this gorgeous yellow federation daisy plant. In this front bed, I have a few celery plants growing in here, which I'm probably going to pull out this week. I just want to make space for some summer crops at this stage. And to be honest with you, they look okay from this angle, but if we delve a bit deeper, check out some of these stems. They've been absolutely destroyed by the slugs and snails. You can even see some of them there waiting for the sun to go down so they can nibble on it even more. Beside the celery bed, I have a few little flowering plants here. The Elysium, which attracts the beneficial bugs. They love this plant and it self seeds really well too. Then there's a Dianthus and this one here is a Salvia. In this bed, I have so much silver beet, more than I possibly could use up now. So what I'm thinking is I might come in, cut it all down, cook it up and then put it in the freezer because it's not just here in this patch. I have some other patches elsewhere in the garden. I really did put in a bit too much this year. Over here beside the flowers in the same garden bed is my wasabi plant, which I purchased a few weeks ago. And um, it was a bit of an impulse buy, as I had mentioned before. And I do have to say, that when I bought it in the pod in the garden centre, it definitely didn't look like this. It has been absolutely attacked by slugs and snails, more so than any other plant here in this garden. When I come out on my snail hunts every night, I'm telling you, this one is dripping in those little pests. They seem to love this foliage. Wasabi plants are native to Japan and they're found growing in low light conditions along stream beds. Although all parts of this plant can be eaten, including these leaves above, it is mostly grown for what's below, for the rhizomes. And the interesting thing about wasabi, if you're ever wondering why it's so expensive to buy, that is because it takes up to four years for those rhizomes underground to develop. I may end up transferring this plant elsewhere in the garden because I have a feeling that it might just be receiving a bit too much sun here and it does like low sunlight. So we'll just wait and see what happens. Just across from these beds, I have a whole load of plants in here that really need to be sorted out. It just looks like <laughs> a big jungle. So over there, that's more silver beet. This patch here is chamomile, which makes a lovely chamomile tea. And then down here beside them, I have some rainbow chard. There's this one here and an orange one. I've got loads of this growing out in the front garden beds too. And then just a mix of flowers, some Johnny Jump Violas, Salvia. And then this will be coming out soon, which is kale. Look at that. 
You should have seen the amount of snails I got off this plant the other day. It was crazy. <laughs> um, well, this is ready to be pulled out soon. And I'm thinking in this bed, I might put in lots of basil because I have a few different varieties of basil going on. So I might pack it in. I love basil. And let's go over and check out these radishes. I'm really enjoying all these beautiful radish flowers. But what I'm more excited about now is all of these radish pods, which are wonderful as a little snack. You can roast them in the oven with a bit of seasoning, or you can also pickle them as well. And it looks like I am going to have a lot of these to play around with and do a bit of experimenting in the kitchen. I'm now standing at the back fence in here just to give you a bit of an overview of this area which will be changing quite soon over the next few months. Let's go now and head out of this section down towards that far chair where I have some beautiful flowers to show you. This little patch of poppies have opened up over the last week with their beautiful purple blooms. I was lucky enough to be given these seeds about a year and a half ago off my friend Stacy when she came to visit and this little patch here has just self-seeded. There's some of them now that are almost finished. Their petals don't seem to last very long but as I had mentioned before I also love their seed pods. Unfortunately, I'm not sure of the name of this variety as my friend got some seeds off her great aunt. But aren't they just the most spectacular looking poppies? Absolutely beautiful. We've also got the roses flowering as well. These plants were already here when we moved in. They were quite established. Um, so I can only guess how old they are maybe 15, 20 years old. And I also have two more down this way, a yellow and red one. Here's the yellow one. And I have actually put another rose plant in here last year. I'll just take a step back without falling over. Um, it's just here beside the mint bush, the Australian mint bush. It's a David Austin rose and it smells so beautiful. Look who's got out of the chicken run area. It's autumn. She's coming over to keep me company while I film this week's update. What you up to? Are you going to say hello to everyone? Not this week, I don't think. <laughs> the flowers on this snapdragon plant are looking beautiful at the moment. I sow the seeds about two years ago and it's the second year which i find with snapdragons in my garden that they put on the best floral display this one is from a mixed seed pack called snapdragon tetra mix and i have to say this is probably my favorite one the colors on it are beautiful the really lovely striking kind of amber tones on the seed pack it said that its stems would reach about 70 centimeters long. But if you take a look at this one, it's at least a meter in height. I'm thinking I might cut some of these off because they make wonderful cut flowers, but I might stop at around 50 centimeters. And then hopefully I'll get some side shoots with some more blooms. And don't forget in the greenhouse, I have some little snapdragon seedlings, a different variety um, rocket mix, which they should be flaring hopefully in summertime. So I'm looking forward to showing you those ones too. I've just come over to the greenhouse. So there they are. There's two trays of eight of this snapdragon rocket mix. Although I've just noticed there's some of them looking a bit dodgy like that one there. Doesn't look like it's going to make it at all. Poor thing. It's been really nice this year because my daughter has shown a bit of interest in helping out a bit more in the garden. So when I was potting up these seedlings, she wrote out the labels for me. All the amaranths in here are doing fantastically. So these three are new varieties. I think I may have shown you that last week. And then in here I have a Cosmos Purity 
no sign of any germination yet which is a bit odd because they usually germinate pretty fast now like at night time it's warm in the evenings and during the night so everything just seems to be popping up much faster I'm having a little issue with the seedlings underneath this shelf they seem to be getting slightly shaded out and if you take a look here you might notice that they're all leaning over in one direction they are really leggy and they've got long thin pale stems this is possibly because they're not getting enough sunlight so what I really need to do with these guys is move them to an area that will receive full sun they're perfectly fine being out outdoors now because we're not getting any more frost so I might move it to the area where I have my other seedlings and baby plants I'll put it in this area which receives a lot more sun and they'll do much better I'm feeling a little bit slack because I still haven't potted up some of these tomato plants and they are just begging to get out of here so out of an entire two packets of seeds from the Queen Lime series I only ended up getting four <laughs> seedlings um, and that's pretty much because of the slugs and snails but if I can get these to grow and flower this year I'll be happy with four plants so here on this side where my thumb is that's the Queen Lime blush and beside it there is the Green Lime red here are my um, corn plants. You can direct sow these, but I decided because of the issues I'm having with pests, I was going to put them in trays where I'd be able to control them a lot better. And then I'll transfer them out into the garden. Now I have sown quite a lot here. I'm not going to be putting all of these out, but in here are glass gem. These ones are mini blue popcorn. And in this row is strawberry popcorn. Growing these varieties will be in addition to the more traditional corn that you see at the supermarkets. I just wanted to try out a few different types this year. Um, the one thing with corn is that you need to be really careful when planting it because they can easily cross pollinate. So I'm going to need to make sure that wherever I put these three varieties they're going to be well apart from each other. Well, it's come to that time again where I'll say goodbye to you for another week. Thank you so much for watching everyone and I'll see you again next Friday.